Hello everyone, my name is Jamie and welcome to my channel. Today we're heading to Rabat in Morocco and in this video I'll take you on our Ryanair flight over there, we'll have a brief look around Rabat and an explore of Casablanca and we'll then head back to Stansted from Rabat Airport. Our journey today starts at London Liverpool Street and we're taking this trip in the late summer of 2019, well before mask wearing or social distancing were a thing, so don't be alarmed when you see us and everyone else without them. Back in 2019, the Stansted Express consisted mainly of a fleet of class 379 Electrostar trains. These were fine for the express journey to the airport. Much of the train features table seats with adjustable armrests which are comfy enough for the 50 minute journey. You'll also find power outlets at the tables too. An any time return ticket for this 50 minute express ride will set you back around £20, and that's with a rail card, it's around £30 without. Often, that's more than the price of your Ryanair flight from Stansted. Another thing to note about London Stansted is it's actually over 60 kilometres or 40 route miles from Liverpool Street. At an average speed of around 50 miles an hour, it takes around 50 minutes, including the 2 to 3 stops along the way. It's not exactly what you think of when you think express. Anyway, arriving into Stansted, we're met by the familiar ticket check before heading up into uh, Arrivals, actually. We're big fans of Costa Coffee and rate it much higher than Starbucks. At Stansted, you can only get a Costa in the Arrivals area, with Starbucks the main coffee chain airside. So we always grab a toasty or a panini, walk the length of the terminal whilst eating it, sometimes in the security lane too. It's just a little bit more time efficient when you've not got much time at all. And today, we don't. Thankfully though, the security at Stansted today was a breeze. Many lanes were open and we didn't have to wait at all. And into the departure lounge we go. Airside there's a fairly decent selection of shops and of course you have to walk through duty free and then buy all of the shops before you can get anywhere near an aircraft. Like most airports, retail space is preferred to seating so good luck finding somewhere to sit if you have a little bit of time to kill. Thankfully for us, we're pushing it to get to the gate, so it's a power walk from the main terminal to gate number 52. It's about a 10 minute walk, but for me much preferable to the automated trains that take you across to the other two aircraft piers. One more staircase to go before we're at the gate and it's right at the end of the pier and down the escalators. Here we go, gate 52. We really did leave it quite late. Most passengers were already outside, waiting to board the aircraft. Unfortunately, most of them couldn't use the rear steps, so we nudged past them all and headed over where there was no queue. Boarding by steps is nothing new on Ryanair, but it really doesn't get old when the sun is shining and you're walking under a 737 wing, climbing up onto your aircraft and looking at the tail. We made our way through the fairly busy cabin and parked up in row 25 seats E and F. Cabin together with the rest of the crew, like bumping your boots right to right back. Short sure, beginning on a way, but a takeaway fast to be here. It's going to take another five minutes. After that, we we'll push on stand. It's going to be a short taxi. Sorry, not taxi. I'm down to the other end of the airport. Uh, take the front of the east end of my way here. It's now it after departure. We'll make a left turn over towards the other side of London. Now, uh, climbing up to a good altitude of 37,000 feet, but under extreme flight conditions for the majority of the journey. Looking at a flight time at a reach of two hours and 55 minutes. Once the doors are closed, only cabin crew will be doing a safety demonstration for your safety and the safety of the passengers around here. Do it while you pay special attention to the short demonstration after that. To back it's a fairly long taxi out to runway 04, which we're lining up on to take off from here.
jammed out into the Essex sky, turning left and heading around London. On the way across we spotted Heathrow from above. The seat on board is one of Ryanair's newer. This is retrofitted into some of their older 737s which you can tell from the non-sky interior on the overhead bins. Legroom is 30 inches, 1 inch more than what you get on British Airways and fine for this 3 hour flight. Be warned though, when Ryanair takes delivery of their new 737 MAX 200 aircraft later this year, seat pitch on those will drop down to 28 inches, a full 2 inches less than what you get today. Rest assured though, once they're flying, I'll put myself through that pain and make a video about it to share with you, so make sure you subscribe as not to miss out on that future video. As we settle into the flight, I had a beer in between some turbulent bumps before checking out the spacious rear galley. The flight progressed south and we flew to the east of Gibraltar which you can see below. Once south of mainland Europe and as the sun began to set along the horizon, we started our gradual descent down into Rabat, flying along the Atlantic coast of Morocco. We landed into the night on runway 2 1. The lighting was prompt and we disembarked into the warm Moroccan air. Now as promised at the start of the video, I'll take you through a few activities that we go up to here in Rabat and in Casablanca as well, before showing you the terminal here for the flight home at the end of the video. It's a fair walk across the tarmac to immigration, where I decided it was best to turn my camera off. Once our passports had been stamped, we found our taxi driver who the Airbnb host had arranged to pick us up. I love the terminal colours here at Rabat Airport, all lit up in the Moroccan flag at night. We made our way through the quiet streets of Rabat to our Airbnb, located on the seafront, near Fort Rottenburg. I've probably butchered that so I do apologise if I have, but that is now a photography museum. Once there, we got some rest, ready for day one in Rabat. Walking north along the coast, our first visit today was the lighthouse. We continued our walk up along the coastline and checking out the Casper of the Udays or the ancient citadel pitched high above this inlet. The buildings within the citadel are reminiscent of Marrakesh to the south, with their colourful artwork. On our way down towards the river, we passed through the Andalusian gardens before heading into the old market's bazaar of Rabat, which is fair to say was having a little bit of a facelift on our visit. Next on our list was the Al Hassan Mosque, and although we didn't enter the mosque, we explored the ancient ruins of a mosque that wasn't ever finished, standing alongside the Hassan Tower. Here you can also enter the mausoleum of Muhammad V, a truly ornate and stunning structure. After lunch we took a tram over to Sale or Sale, let me know in the comments how to correctly pronounce that. Once there, we walked across the beach to catch a boat back across the river to Rabat. The boats here are all painted in blue and are more of a taxi ride to the other bank. I can't remember the cost but it wasn't too much. Our captain was more than happy to take us across there but do be warned, the blankets and fabrics on the boats do get wet and they don't always dry so they can smell quite strongly. Day 2 of our 2 day trip will take us down to Casablanca. I flagged down a blue taxi, 
for a really interesting ride over to the train station. There's two main train stations in Rabat. We want Rabat Ville or Ville just off the wide open Parisian style Mohammed V Avenue. Our train today is to Casa Port, so it's the 1002. Now I know that Crossrail has taken absolutely ages to be completed in London, but I think the Moroccans do have a good solution to that. Just open the railway whilst the station is still being built around it. I'm sure everything was perfectly safe, but the station was a little way off being finished, and it was quite dusty and fairly loud with the building work still taking place. Railways in Morocco are operated by OCNF and they have a mixed fleet of rolling stock. Here's an Espace Voyager built in France. Our train today is an Italian built Z2M double decker based on a train by Italian operator Trentalia. Now I'm not a train geek so I do apologise if I've got any of that wrong. Planes are more my thing as you know. On board though you have the option of two decks and our ticket is for standard or second class so we chose to sit upstairs to make the most of any views out of the window. On board the seat is fairly comfortable if a little worn, there are no power outlets but what more do you need for the 60 minutes. There wasn't too much to see on this one hour train ride besides some residential blocks, a few farms and some dusty agriculture. The lighting in Casablanca, a place that I hadn't really researched much at all, all I could think of was I'm sure there's a film named after this place. The station here was much more complete than the bats though. We hadn't yet had breakfast so our first stop yeah. was an authentic Mackey's. Was a Mackey's? In Casablanca, you even get to share your McNuggets with the local cats. First stop on our magical mystery tour then is Hassan the Second Mosque. We took a red taxi from outside the station, and every taxi driver here will try and give you the Casablanca tour, showing you the famous scenes from the movie. Honestly, this place here is absolutely incredible. You really have to see it to take it all in. Unlike the part-built mosque that we saw in Rabat, this one was only finished in 1993, and is stunningly ornate and it's used pretty much every day today. We did the touristy thing to do and take some photos before keeping to the shade and walking towards the tower. As you get closer, you really do appreciate the size and scale of this place, especially once you're at the foot of the tower. I found Casablanca and Rabat to a lesser extent completely different to anywhere I'd ever been before. You can go from an ornate religious centre and a sea of tranquility one moment and be walking through abject poverty and the craziness of the bazaar the next, where people are literally selling items out of the bins. I think the culture shock here is an understatement, and it certainly was for me. I'm far more used to my Westfield shopping centre, or shopping in Carnaby Street. We had our second lunch in a tapas restaurant that we found away from the hustle and bustle, Needless to say, we might have overdone it with the food a little bit today. Unfortunately though, it's now time for us to head back to Rabat and catch our flights home. Now there are buses in Casablanca, although I'm not too sure how safe they are. And yes, this bus was full of passengers just a few minutes before I took this shot. The train back to Rabat was very much the same as the one that we took here. Once back in Rabat, I just have one more thing to add. Check out how well disguised these foam masts are, they almost look like real palm trees. We took a taxi ride to the airport which dropped us off right outside. The terminal here is really nice isn't it? To enter the check-in area all bags need to go through an x-ray machine, although I didn't really see anybody checking the x-ray screens as they passed through. Despite already having printed our boarding passes at home, we weren't allowed into the security line, as in Rabat you need to get your ID verified before you can proceed through security. This meant queuing up at a check-in desk, despite no bags to drop, 
for an agent to simply stamp our boarding pass to say that they had indeed seen our ID. Our ID documents were checked four times between entering the terminal and getting into the departure lounge. The lounge itself is actually really underwhelming compared to the outside of the terminal. There really wasn't much choice of shopping, there was fairly limited natural light, and not a great amount of seating really. Made the terminal feel a little bit dingy. Our flight to Stansted is the penultimate flight out of here this evening, thankfully on time and we boarded into the night. This evening's aircraft is Delta Zulu, and at the time of flying was only 18 months old. Being brand new, it features the full Boeing Sky interior, and the slimline Ryanair seats that we had on the flight over here. This particular aircraft now flies under the Malta Air brand, a subsidiary of Ryanair. As we taxi out for takeoff, I'll leave you with these cabin shots and bring this video to a close. Thank you for watching and staying through to the end, I really do hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback down in the comments and it goes without saying, please subscribe for more uploads coming soon. Thanks again for watching, stay safe and I'll see you next time.